You know when you go to the grocery store with a really short list, like all you need is toothpaste and a whole bunch of other things fall into your cart somehow? Well, this is like that. <laughs> hang on, hang on, that's about it. It's right here. It's right here. We thought for a second that you were gonna feed him. Okay, hold on girls. Over here. Over here. Calamity, come here. Look. Look, right here. Got it? There they go. If you've been following our story for a little while, you'll know that we've had uh, quite a series of unfortunate losses on the La Mancha side of our goat herd. One of the more major ones was the loss of our herd sire, Cash, to urinary calculi. Oh gosh! We also lost his son, so we didn't have any way to carry on purebred La Manchas here at the farm. Until now. I went onto Craigslist and found a really awesome disease-free breeder in Tennessee who held him for me. And we picked him up yesterday. That over there, that's Hamish. Hamish and the girls here are ADGA registered. I sent in their papers yesterday. And I'm so, so excited to bring them on. I wasn't gonna buy any dolings, but the dolings were available. And I figured if I'm gonna be bottle feeding and spending the time bottle feeding anyway, that I may as well just go all in. So Hamish is quite a bit older than the girls. I've got him separated just because he is acting pretty bucky and I wanna be able to give the little girls a break. He's not old enough where he could breed them yet. I have to look at my papers. I think he was born February 25th, but still. They can see each other through the walls of the kidding stall. They're not super distressed and it works out. That's it. That's it. You need to eat your hay, boo. You need to, you need to eat that hay. Now we don't bottle raise the kids here. To me, it's just extra work to milk and then bottle feed when you could just let them nurse. I know there's a whole bunch of reasons that people do choose to pull and bottle feed. And one of the reasons is that you can get some really awesome, really well handled kids out of it. And honestly, I think that's the best buck to have for sure is a bottle fed buck. And there are probably people out there that think differently. I know that some bottle fed bucks can just be a little bit too much, especially in the breeding season where they just kind of won't leave you alone. I need them to be caught and handled so that I can do things like deworm them, trim their hooves, uh, any number of things, give them their copper bolus. Bucks need to be handled. Cash was a bottle fed buck and he was the absolute sweetest and you could handle him in any way that you needed to. This one is Calamity. Where'd you go? There she is. Oh, oh no, no. <laughs> no. Your bottle's done. This is Talia. Talia. Talia and Hamish look a lot alike. They're not related. Calamity though, Calamity and Hamish share a dad. I don't plan on breeding them together. I know a lot of people will breed um, half siblings. I plan on using Calamity and breeding her for mini La Manchas, much like I have with s'mores in the past. But s'mores for two seasons has wound up not being able to be bred. I breed her during the normal breeding season. She doesn't go back into heats, but then five months later, she also doesn't kid. I actually have a vet appointment for s'mores on Thursday to find out maybe what's going on, possibly put in what's called a cedar to get her going into heats outside of the normal season for La Manchas. So we very well could have a La Mancha birth and some La Mancha kids and La Mancha milk this fall. You're too much. You need to eat your hay, huh? You need to eat your hay. 
big boy over here, he gets two 12 ounce bottles in the morning, two 12 ounce bottles in the evening, <laughs> Gosh. and one 12 ounce bottle in the afternoon. And that's this feeding. Oh my gosh. Hey, listen, listen. We can be friends, but goodness. Personal space. <laughs> you don't know what that is, do you? Oh yeah, they're gonna eat my ear. You are. These guys have never been exposed to green pasture. Um, they've also never been exposed to our animals. We are not in the perfect quarantine situation here. It is pretty typical to quarantine new animals coming onto your farm for 30 days before you put them even with adjoining fences to your current animals. I don't have the ability to really do that here and keep them off of grass. Because they come from a disease-free herd, I worry much less about the diseases that they could bring in um, than I do about our fresh grass, which is growing abundantly right now, giving them some pretty harsh bloat symptoms. Probably in about five or so days, I'll let them have some supervised uh, pasture visits. Huh? Yeah. You're a good girl. Mm. So pretty. You think this is a bottle? You need to get used to seeing this thing. It's going to be in your face a lot. One of the reasons, besides the obvious, I mean, the more does the better, that I wanted some more large breed. Oh my gosh. Just, I mean, maybe this isn't safe. Maybe it's not safe. They were not this friendly with me yesterday, but they have figured out that I mean good things. Huh? They're adjusting well, clearly. Maybe I need to do a talk out there? Do I need to do that? Okay, I'll do that. Oh my goodness. See you later. See you later, handsome. So one of the reasons that I wanted more large breed does, I have a ton of Nigerians, is that the large breed does, they do eat more. And while it sounds like that would be a negative, I need kind of as many mouths as I can get to eat the abundance of pasture down that we have here. Last year we had three La Mancha does and all of the Nigerians on this pasture and they kept it mowed down really until the broom sedge started growing. And a lot of goats just don't like eating broom sedge so that was allowed to grow kind of tall but Levi's gonna mow that soon. Hi Dinky! Hi Dinky! Is Dinky and Elpis. Look at the size difference. I mean, there's two weeks uh, age difference too, but still. Here, let me put this down and see. Come here, Dinky. Come here, you're so Dinky. Come here. He's a little bit rattly still. Say, but I'm doing good. Dinky's pulled, isn't that awesome? So the extra does that I bought will be super useful in obviously the kids and the milk that they can provide, but also in the amount of pasture that they'll be able to help manage. Come here. Come here, I wanna talk about you. Are you mad at me? I think Elpis is jealous. Come here. Oh, I feel bad. Elpis, come here, I wanna talk about you. Tempest is like, talk about me. Look at how solid and just gorgeous Tempest is looking. Huh? Grandma over here. That's where you get your jealousy streak, this lady. Hmm. Yes. Oh, come here, Elpie. Don't eat my camera. Come on, baby. Come here. Can we talk about you? Yeah. So, oh, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> no, thank you, Rory. Talk about jealousy streak, I'm not kidding. The lady that I bought my, my new babies from, her name is Rachel. And Rachel helped me understand that Elpis, her coloring is actually Toggenberg coloring. And Toggenberg is a breed of goat all in itself. And they're required um, for registry purposes to have this specific coloring. So if you look up Toggenberg goat, it looks exactly like Alpis, except for Alpis is a La Mancha. She's purebred. And I did a little bit of research and learned that 
A bunch of different dairy goat breeds have gone into the development of the La Mancha breed. And obviously we've got some Toggenberg genetics somewhere in the line. Huh. In about a week, I'm going to be meeting with our regional ADGA director. We're in region three and she's going to help me get um, Elpis and her mom papered. Elpis's mom is Christine, this chocolate colored or copper colored La Mancha back here. And I bought Christine from a friend. Christine is registered, but we haven't been able to track down her paperwork or anything about her. My friend bought her, never actually registered her, doesn't remember exactly where she bought her. So Christine's paperwork is kind of lost in the sauce and that's just a little bit sad. But it turns out that you can get a doe kind of half registered. It's called native on appearance. And I can take her in to somebody who knows what they're looking at, like a, like a director, someone who does uh, show judging and have them say, this goat looks and appears and conforms to the breed standard of a La Mancha. And I can get her papered and it isn't exactly a purebred registration, but as I breed back, Christine and her progeny, like Elpis, two registered bucks, we can get a purebred line out of them in about three generations, I think it was, three or four. So Christine will have a native on appearance paper, and because she was bred to cash, a purebred La Mancha buck, Elpis is actually 50% purebred American La Mancha. And when we breed Elpis to Hamish, who's a purebred registered La Mancha, I think it's either that generation or the generation after that will be officially purebred. I've mentioned in the past that the papers are just kind of fluff for me. We don't do shows. The most important thing to me is actually the milk and the pail, not the paperwork, but it's super nice to have. When you do have the registered paperwork, you're able to show that you truly are selling purebred animals of high quality. And I think that's pretty special. Hi, Tempe. Hi, Boba. <laughs> You're a little bit too big to sit with, aren't you, buddy? Oh, no. I should get out of here. <laughs> I should get out of here. I know what that means. No, sir. No, thank you. My husband informed me that we now have 24 goats on the farm now and counting.